Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we're going to talk about one of the most important tools in Mari, the paint buffer. So far, we've taken a look at procedural layers in Mari, which give us the ability to generate texture data to produce results like the colour fills we have done so far. Now we're going to work with the paint buffer to manually paint details onto our object. Let's have another look at our camera reference. What details do you think we'd need to paint manually that procedural layers couldn't achieve? Well, immediately I'm drawn to the text around the camera lens, the Lubitel sticker and the Lomo sticker. To paint these specific details, we can use the paint through tool, which is a special kind of paintbrush that allows you to load in an image to project onto the object. But let's discuss the paint buffer first. When you're painting in Mari, you're painting onto what we call the paint buffer. Think of it as if you're painting onto a clear pane of glass between yourself and the object in the viewport. Go into the painting palette and under projection settings, change bake behavior to manual. Auto bake and clear is the default setting in Mari, but for the sake of this part of the tutorial, let's use manual, as this is going to give us the most control over our paint buffer, which we're about to demonstrate. Let's create a new layer in our base color channel. Activate the paint tool, either by clicking this tool on the left side of the UI or hit the P key. Choose a colour using this colour swatch picker and just paint on top of your viewport. Now if you hold down Alt and Shift to pan the camera around, you can see the painting on our paint buffer is essentially stuck to our view while the object in the viewport moves around. You might be wondering, so how do I actually paint onto the object then? Once we have painted onto our paint buffer, if we want it to be baked onto the object, we have to hit the B key. Give that a go now. Now if you move the camera again, you can see that the paint has been baked onto our object, but our painting still remains in our paint buffer. That's because the paint buffer with manual bake behaviour holds onto the paint until we decide we want to use it again, or until we clear it out. So to clear out our paint buffer, hit Ctrl, Shift and C. We can actually change this baking and clearing behaviour by going to the painting palette. We only want to focus on the paint buffer and projection settings for now, so you can fold away the other menus if there is any open. The description field in the paint buffer menu lets you decide if you want the paint buffer to be displayed in the viewport or not. So right now you might find your paint buffer is zoomed out slightly because by default the paint buffer is tied to the width of your viewport on the screen. If you go to the transform menu make sure scale is set to 1 in each of the X and Y fields. And now we can see the buffer in the viewport. Now I can show and hide my paint buffer on screen using the description drop down. Hiding it might be useful if you've transformed the buffer and it begins obstructing your view of the model. Using the transform tools, transforming your paint buffer is really useful if you've already painted something onto it and you need to scale, rotate or translate what you've painted. Then reset on bake resets the transforms to default once you've baked your painting down. For now we can keep the transform settings as default. Under projection settings, in the projection menu, we have some options related to the bake behaviour and how the paint in our paint buffer projects onto the object's surface. I have my bake behaviour set to manual. This means the paint buffer will only bake onto the object when I hit the B key for bake. And it will also retain the paint in the buffer. Clear only means the paint buffer only bakes down when you hit B. But it also clears out the paint buffer afterwards, which means you're not storing paint data in the memory anymore. And auto bake and clear means whenever you move the model, the paint buffer automatically bakes down and clears the paint buffer. This might be the most efficient method if you are painting down details really quickly. However, manual or clear only are going to give you the most control over your baking and paint buffer. So I recommend sticking to manual for now if you're a brand new user. The projection dropdown simply allows us to select either front or through. Front determines that our painting should project only onto the first surface it hits when we bake down. Through projects the paint through the first surface and out of the other side of the object, so the paint will be applied on each of those surfaces it hits. We don't want to project through on our object because we just want to stamp down logos on the front of our camera, so make sure front is selected. You can change this behaviour at any time by toggling the front through control on the system bar at the bottom right. And project on allows us to specify whether the paint should be projected onto everything in our viewport or only selected faces. For example, if we had one of our selection groups selected, we could specify that we only want to apply paint to that which is selected 
using the selected only option. Let's come back up to the paint buffer menu settings again and take a quick look at colour depth and buffer size. These are actually very important because ideally they should match the values of our currently selected channel. However, there are scenarios where the buffer size should be changed. If the zoom level of your buffer has been changed by zooming close to your model, then our 2K buffer might only be painting onto 10% of our UV patch area, resulting in a very small texel density. Let's show you what that looks like. If we have a paint buffer scale of 1 and a 2K buffer size, and our object at the zoom in the viewport, if I just draw a little shape and start to zoom in, you can see the interactive texel size begins to change and gets less dense. What this means is as we get closer to our object, the image becomes more pixelated. If you need more detail and close-ups on your object, increasing the buffer size allows for more fidelity, but be warned this may also slow down your performance. If we have a higher resolution set in the buffer size than what our channel size is, then we're going to have unexpected results with our painting, because we will be painting at higher resolution than what we are baking down to. We can see in the viewport the buffer size is 2048 by 2048, which is the resolution of the painting we'd be doing on the buffer, and this is also the size of our channel, so that's fine. Depth refers to our colour depth, or bit depth, and the lower the bit depth, the lower the amount of bits are available to encode shades or colours in a pixel. Essentially, the higher the bit depth, the more colours it can support. Our base colour channel is using an 8-bit depth, so let's make sure our paint buffer matches that so we don't see unexpected results. Now we've made a nice mess of our layer, we can right-click the layer in the layer palette and click Remove Layers to get rid of it. We've taken a good look at the paint buffer. In the next part, we'll use the Paint Through tool to project all the stickers and logos onto our object. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.